The Joint Research Centre, which operates within the European Union, created a general scheme in 2020 that shows us where the sources of microplastics are in our environment. They defined three significant sources of microplastics, which I also highlight here, industry, urban environments, and households. The routes through which microplastics can burden the environment may be via different water sources, it can be sanitary wastewater, standing, surface water, and, consequently, the soil and air. So, microplastics can come into the environment through all these media. First, microplastics can come unintentionally from all these sources. Second, microplastics can be intentionally produced, meaning these polymeric materials are already made in sizes up to 5 mm and added to various applications. They may be used as raw materials, such as industrial pellets, granules, and fibers, to produce some significant macroplastic products. Microplastics can also be added to improve the properties of certain products. This is the case in personal care products, where microplastics are added as microbeads. These products are, for example, cleansing milk peels, where the microbeads have very different functions. Last but not least, microplastics can also be a byproduct generated through the life cycle of plastic products, that is, by using them, by their wear, erosion, or washing, for example, synthetic fabrics and similar. The source of microplastics can also be larger plastic products, which we dispose of incorrectly. In this case, the macroplastic products become waste. Then, under various physicochemical processes and UV rays or sunlight, they may disintegrate into smaller plastic particles up to 5 mm in size. So we see that there are quite a few sources of microplastics. In general, we roughly divide microplastics into two groups. These are primary and secondary microplastics. Suppose we relate them with the scheme I explained in the previous slide. The primary microplastic is the one that is intentionally produced and released into the environment as granules, fibers, additives to some products, or for the production or improvements of product-specific properties, and also as deliberate or even unintentional wear of plastic products. On the other hand, we talk about secondary microplastics when formed unintentionally due to decomposition, weathering, and decay of macroplastic products. In the case of secondary microplastics, the central problem might be improperly disposed or discarded plastic material.